Ooh. Oh, 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 okay. is this the new owl? No, this is just <laughs> that thing. Oh, moving. Yeah, it's not the owl. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. We haven't met. I'm Alex. Nice to meet you. I'm Megan. I'm Alex. So I'm like, yeah. Help me too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the same club. Yes. Okay. <laughs> The, at 6.01, I called this meeting on September 4th of the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee to order held in the City Hall Annex Conference Room. Um, if you had comment during the meeting, Phil, let us know, and um, you'll have you'll be able to give your comment. Uh, may we have roll call? Yes. Okay. Uh, Chair Daryl Yip. Here. Uh, Vice Chair Dylan Kingy. Yep. Y'all let me know if I mispronounce your name. So Kingy. Okay. Yep. okay, thank you. Um, Arian Guzman. Yes. Uh, Frank Bacali. Here. And Philip Holenbach. Here. Okay. Right. There's five, all five of us here. Um, any changes to the agenda? No. Okay. Uh, public comments. No public comments. Anyone in the room want to give public comment? They're all presenting. No speakers. Okay. All right. Consent calendar approval of meeting minutes. Um, does anyone have any comments on the minutes? I have some that I want to read off. There was one typo. Oh yeah, I, I noticed that. Go ahead. Uh, I mentioned there are three separate transpiration, but it should be transportation. Yes. Oh. They already okay. Yep. So I'm just going to read this in the record. They already know um, the title of the minutes document was incorrect. Um, under my comment, under items from BPAC members, I requested an update on the SSF transportation projects near 101. Um, not just, I think I, I want it to be more specific that it includes things like the Utah overpass Grace interchange and the shoreline protection and connectivity project. And then I think that's it. Any other edits to the minutes? Okay. Uh, do we want to vote on the minutes? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. I'll second that. Uh, do we vote or do we just we vote? Yes. Okay. Do you want that? Oh, yes. Sorry. Okay. Um, may I make a disclaimer? This is the first time I've been in this role before. So <laughs> thank you for the thank you for the prompts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Chair Daryl Yip. Uh, yes, the amended minutes. Okay. Vice Chair Dylan. Yes. Hinge. Did I say it right? Yes. Okay, Hinge. Okay. Um, Arian Guzman, I have uh, Frank McCauley, yes, and Philip Holenbeck. Great, minutes are approved. All right, administrative business engage SSF. We have Alex Henry. I'll let um, you introduce. Sorry, introduce item number two. Oh, great. Okay, we were talking because I was asking for validation. Okay. Item number two is Engage SSF, and we have uh, Alex Henry, our Public Works Program Manager, here to present tonight. Hi, guys. So, great. Just so I'm not tripping. Yeah. Perfect. So, all right, everyone. I'm Alex Henry from Public Works. Uh, I'm the Program Manager for Operations. Um, a little bit about what we do. We take care of the streets, some of the sidewalks, um, fill potholes. Um, repair asphalt stuff like that so we're primarily responsible for this you know structure in south city um, we also do some sidewalk repairs um, that gets a little bit more complicated but we do um, some sidewalk repairs as well um, so i'm a good person to ask questions to during this meeting if you have any feel free to ask me about stuff like that um, what i'm going to do for engage ssf is i'm going to put my phone up on the screen to kind of walk you guys through the app um, 
to show you how to use it, if that makes sense. Um, if you have any questions while I'm talking, feel free to shout them out. You don't have to wait till the end. Uh, I know that's how I work. I might forget them by the end. So if you have a question, feel free to, to ask. Um, go ahead and set this up here. Showing my screen like that. That's all right. I didn't even know that was an option. Easier than talking through it. It's I think. amazing. So the Engage SSF app. This is the icon. You can download it on your smartphone. I already have it. Or you can get on the internet. Um, that's what this flyer we have printed out. We'll show you how to do it from the internet if you want to do it at home. Um, same process. It's just you would do it from a computer instead of the the smartphone. Um, when you click on this. Uh, It'll open up this screen, uh, how many issues we've fixed, um, how many, yes. So what this app does is push to a different app called C-Click Fix, which is where we primarily get all of our requests from. This is sort of just a vessel to get it to us um, in the city. Uh, Public Works does the majority of, of requests. We're sort of the, the intended recipient of the majority of C-Click Fix requests. Um, the reason I say intended recipient is because a lot of stuff, when people put it in, it, it sort of gets misplaced or, or they don't put it to the right intended target. Um, so sometimes it takes a little while to get to us. Um, right here under the camera, which is a little bit hard to see, is something that says new request. So if you click on new request, it's going to open up this window right here, which it's much easier for us to fix or repair the issue that you guys have. If there's a photo for us to kind of see, kind of like we're doing now, it's easier, a picture's worth a thousand words, right? So if you're able to say, hey, we have this problem and there's a picture, might be easier for us to see, might be self-explanatory, but a picture always helps. Um, gives you a couple different options to run through it. Uh, you can either use your camera in the moment. Hey, there's a pothole right here. Let me use the camera. It'll open up your camera. You can take a picture. If you have it in your photo library, you can use that as well. Um, for this one, we'll just do no photo since we don't have anything in here. Next thing it's gonna do, ask you for a location. You can hit this little button and allow you to, oh, it's because I'm not connected to the internet, but uh, you know, you center it where you're at. Um, right now, we're right here on the an annex. Um, once you find your location up top, next. And then what this is going to do, I'm sorry, I keep turning the internet off over here just so I don't get confused, but um, let's see what's going to happen here. Why aren't we working? Tech problems. <laughs> now you're okay. There we go. There we go. Ooh. All right, so. <laughs> ton of different categories for you to input your concern um, that, that you want us to know about. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult for you guys to pick the right one. Sometimes it's very simple, right? If you're concerned about a pothole, pothole, right? Um, there's a lot of different things in here. Try to pick the right category. If you're not sure, we're pretty good at figuring it out. Like I said, sometimes it just takes a little bit longer for us to get them if it's, if it's miscategorized. Sometimes it goes to the wrong person. They have to recategorize it. They might not be sure. So sometimes it just takes a little bit longer for us to get it. Um, but we, we, all of them are going to get seen. It just depends on if it's categorized right, how long it'll take to get to us, if that makes sense. So um, depending on what you're putting in, you know, you can uh, click on that. You can add your picture or not add your picture up top in the description. You can write kind of whatever you want that you think will help us identify it, make it easier for us to see. There's a pothole on El Camino in the lane closest to the center divide. Something that makes it easier for us to determine where it might be. Um, whatever you think would help us, that's how we would use that information to determine where it is. Um, and then, you know, it asks you for some of your details uh, that, that you can put in. And then once you hit submit, it's coming to us. Um, this is, so this app 
primarily for identifying problems that we can correct. Um, this is not an app for, let's say you have a concern about, uh, hey, you know, or, or let, let's say you have a, a suggestion you'd like to make. This intersection seems like maybe we should do something like this with it. This isn't the app for that. This is for identifying problems like potholes or, you know, tree branch or, or um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that that is problematic that we can repair. Um, something like a concern or a suggestion for traffic improvement, that's a whole different thing, which is um, we do through a traffic advisory committee. Um, but but this app right here, primarily for identifying problems that, that we can repair, um, most likely through public works, but Parks does some tree work. So if there's branches hanging down or trees falling over, that will go to Parks. They would take care of that. Um, and that's about the extent of it. Um, questions? Do you look at the data like overall? I mean, six sixty four thousand pieces of data do anyone look at it and say oh we keep getting a pothole in this spot we do no we do absolutely we look and we get thousands public works gets thousands of requests a year mm -hmm. um we want to get into the weeds a little bit a lot of it is for like illegal dumping mm -hmm. um we get a ton of illegal dumping plates a ton of illegal dumping in this area downtown just because there's so many people and you know so many people eating and stuff like that so a lot of it is illegal dumping but yeah we're always looking at it and sort of trying to determine how we can improve and, and you know what we can do more proactively stuff like that but yeah so pothole data we use that data to kind of determine hey this street seems to be failing or we'll with with engineering to try to determine how our paving plan is going to sort of work to, hey, we're having a lot of problems on this street. I know it wasn't due to be paved, but maybe we should bump it up because we're getting a lot of problems out here, stuff like that. But we're absolutely looking at the data regularly. Um, it's it's a great tool for us to be able to look at all this stuff because this stuff's all coming from people in the public, right? So there's a lot of, it's great. You know, we have over 100 miles of street in South City and we only have so many staff members, so we can't look at all of it every day. But but with Probably this, someone does. No, you're absolutely right. And with this tool, everybody's able to like, you know, if you walk the same street every day, you're going to know it better than I will. And you'll, you'll, hey, this sidewalk is messed up or this street looks, you know, like it's failing. And, oh, we didn't think about, you know, we, we haven't been down this road in a while. And, and you might bring some to the attention that we haven't seen, right? So um, it is a great tool and we do use it quite a bit. One of the reasons why you're here, why we asked you to um, give a presentation is because we're concerned about the quality of um, streets, uh, specifically for walking and biking. Is there like any areas that you've found through the data that you have like changed your operations and gone there more often to maintain that area? Do you have any examples? Um, so one that comes to the top of my head is, uh, East Grand, um, sort of in between Gateway and Littlefield, let's say, um, heavily traveled road by a lot of different forms of transportation, bikes, cars, trucks, garbage trucks, semi trucks, right? A lot of people are traveling on that road, um, has a bike lane that, that gets kind of catches a lot of the debris. So we've used that data along with some C-click fix requests for, for more service to improve our level of service out there and clean that for primarily for bikers that are that are commuting out on that road um, that, that have brought it to our attention that, hey, there's a lot of debris built up over here and it's kind of getting a little bit hectic to travel on bike. Um, you know, so uh, we have used it. One of the examples that, I, that, that comes to mind is, is that for sure, yeah. I have a second question. Um, the other one is, what is your relationship or is the, engage, the staff that work on Engage SSS relationship with the police department? Because I submit quite a few parking requests about like block sidewalks or crosswalks. Do you, do you work together with the police department to like figure out enforcement? Or does the police department have its own separate? So I don't know, but I, I, I'm assuming police has their own. We don't send requests to police, yeah. Oh, they, just, they, just, they have direct access to it? Yeah, so good evening, Dave Bockhouse, Deputy Director of Public Works. Um, anything that you submit through the C-Click fix that's a parking issue is sent directly to people. Okay. So then they'll answer it usually via their non-emergency personnel. 
it's one of the reasons that I'm saying it's so important to try to categorize it correctly because in that example, right, police gets notified, but if you were to put that in as parks, I know that doesn't make sense, but I'm just sort of using an extreme example. If you put a parking yeah. issue as parks, it would go to the parks department. Mm -hmm. They might not know who to send it to, and it would kind of hang in limbo for a while until somebody figured it out and put it into the right spot, right? So it could take quite a bit of time for it to end up in the right hands, and it might have already rectified itself by that time, right? And it would have been no help. So it's it's important to try because we get a lot of miscategorized things, um, mostly related to like debris or, or, you know, sometimes people will put illegal dumping in a park because that's where it is, but they're not the ones who would necessarily clean it up. Um, so it's it's hard and, and it's not anybody's fault. It's just difficult to kind of pick the right category and know sort of the way it works sometimes. There's no way for you to send it back for recategorization or... I mean, that seems there no it, flaw in your process. Anybody <laughs> can recategorize it, but if you don't know, you know, it's it's hard to know the way everything in the city works. Like so if, if you're you not were, quite sure yeah, if you how were, it works, you know, if if you were the parks department and you didn't know who was in charge of of the parking, you might not put it to the right person. So it might take a little bit of time, but we absolutely have people that look at these and know which categories most of the stuff belongs in. But it, sometimes it just takes a few more days to get to the right spot. Like it could just bounce around a little bit yeah. because if something got routed, I mean, for example, like I work in planning, but if I got an issue related to debris pickup, I might not know who to give it to. I might send, I know Matt, he sits over there. So I might send him to Matt, then Matt, you know what I mean? So it's just like, it's going to get there. It's Matt's just pick up the garbage. Matt That's will pick right. up the garbage. That's what I asked him to do. And he's going to do it. Yeah, it's just, it's just an efficiency. It sounds like it's an efficiency. Or, or a pothole in the park, right? It would seem fair to say, well, I saw a pothole in the park. I'm going to make it a parks it issue. Parks, yeah. But it's not the parks who are going to take care of it. Public Works is the people who take care of potholes. So if you did that to parks, which is a very common thing, they have to recategorize it to us, which just takes a little more time. They absolutely know what to do, but it just, it's its one more step, right? It just takes a little bit longer um, in, in as far as getting the issue corrected, but but it'll absolutely get to the right people um, because we will do, like you're saying, do you look at the data? We'll look at ones, hey, what hasn't been addressed this week? Oh, okay, you know, that's our stuff. And, and we go through them like that, yeah. So we absolutely look at it and we do find Great. all the stuff that, that maybe got overlooked or wasn't sure where to get categorized, yeah. I would also say in, in a case like a block sidewalk or somebody parked in the bike lane, you'd be better calling the not emergency line because that would get, get, not immediate, but it would get a quicker response than submitting a tag, which may not get looked at until the next day. You mean the yes. non-emergency police line or yes, the non-emergency non police? Okay. So you can call them for cars blocking sidewalks, car blocking bike lanes. And it will be more responsive okay. than this. Because this, you know, you put in a parking not emergency, and it's usually for like a car being there long instead of two hours. So the night shift isn't going to take a look at that. The day shift is very terrible with parking enforcement. Now it's been a lot of four hours, right? So if it's something you need sooner, you'd be better off calling the non emergency line. That, that's good advice. That gives me a couple extra questions. Is there a target? Does public works have a targeted response time? And then we do, depending on the um, type of issue, signals, 24 hours, illegal dumping. We try to get to it within the first day or two, but we set like three days. So potholes, depending on the severity, we try to get to it within three That's great. days. But you know, so it all depends on the severity. If you tell us the signals are flash, we're going to get out there as soon as we can. Tell us the street lights out, we're going to prioritize it, but it's not going to be an emergency. So um, we do have what we try to hit as standard response times. And through this data and this engages us up and see click fix, Alex gets weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly reports that talk about those average response times and the case is closed and our closed percentage and our open percentage. And, how many have aged out longer than 30 days? How many are longer than 90 days? You know, and so he's constantly using that data to improve our uh, response. Do you ever, I mean, you keep saying about the legal dumping and it's the biggest problem. Is it always the same spot? Is there any way the police can help you catch the people doing the legal dumping so you don't have to keep going there? Or Great question. We're constantly trying to figure it out. It's 
it's not always the same spot, but it's it's areas that that are hot spots, right? And and uh, this sounds frustrating to me. No, it's absolutely frustrating. Um, but you know, there, I mean, there's so much else that we could be doing than cleaning up dumping, but it's it's you know when it's there, we got to clean it up. So well, yes, thank yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's tough, you know, but yeah, uh, we're always trying to find better ways to, to deal with it, uh, but uh, it's difficult. Yeah, so know, please no way around give it. any support. And find uh, not, not that they don't give us support, but it's just difficult. It's difficult to, to, to it's, it's a difficult issue to solve for sure. Uh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. So, I mean, a pothole you can maybe plan for, but that is yeah, a of control, a much right? easier uh, thing to fix <laughs> than legal dumping for sure. Yeah. What's the wackiest request you've ever gotten? Oh <laughs> um, yeah, I don't even know. We, we, we get some crazy stuff. Sometimes there is one in there for compliments. Oh, we have to pull the dust off of that one occasionally. <laughs> Nice. I don't get many of those, but but there is something in there for compliments. There's one in there for questions. That's where some of the weird stuff comes. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, there's a lot of strange stuff that comes through. And it's just sometimes it's difficult, right? Like sometimes it's sort of just a broken request and you can't really give a location, locations around stuff like that. So sometimes I definitely say like parts of my job, I'm part detective mm -hmm. in order to solve some of this stuff. It's very difficult to sort of decipher some of it. So the more info you can put in a request, locations, picture, you know, in the description and exact location, it, it gets much easier for us. Some of them, like I said, super easy to identify pothole on this street, this, you know, westbound, great. Some of them a little more difficult, you know, so uh, the more the more information you can put, the easier it gets for us and the faster we'll be able to get to it, yeah. So dumping is the um, most prevalent. Yeah. What would you say the second most common type of request is? I don't know. What do you think it is? I mean, we get a lot of like dumping yeah. shopping carts. We get a lot of code enforcement. A lot of code enforcement stuff. So just to kind of put into perspective what Alex said, we get, I don't know, 4,500 requests a year. I think they're with the code enforcement probably more. 65% of those are free collected ones. Illegal dumping, graffiti, shopping carts, pick up on average seven hundred shopping carts a year. Seven hundred? Did you yeah. say seven hundred? Who are they? And then that's just the ones that what are they doing? What do you do? With oh, it? Do you return them to Target? Um, we are they take them to the courtyard. There's card retrieval services. So sometimes we'll notice a business. So we don't have a very strong shopping cart policy right now. Something we've worked on. Right. Says about a lot of um, Action. political support. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. So. I just figured out my question. Um, so, some of the comments that you said aren't really filtered through Engage SSF are things that go through the traffic advisory. I forget the traffic committee. advisory. Yeah. 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 Traffic advisory committee. Committee. Yep. Or whatever the, the advisory committee like. Is. That's, that's what it's called traffic, traffic advisory committee yeah. attack and then parking is there any way you could put on the website if you have a if you have like a suggestion for traffic please submit it there instead of engage us because i had the i always had the impression that if like i had a suggestion like oh a curb a lot of people keep illegally parking at this curb because it's unclear and the paints it, like there's missing paint so we're we're trying to to work on combining those a little bit, making them a little more intuitive. Um, when the city rolls out their new uh, AI assistant on the website, I think that that's going to help a lot. You just be able to type in what you want to do and it'll push you where you need to go. But rest assured, <laughs> according to Engage SSM, this curve needs to be painted red for these reasons. We would get that in public works. We would submit a tax request on your behalf to let you know okay. that we would, re we would review it. It's not the easiest way to do it. Um, the best way to do it would be a tax request, but if it gets to us that way, we'll still submit it. Yeah. It worked though, because the school across the street from me, their paint, their red paint was faded. I put in there, their paint is faded. Someone came and painted it. So, yeah, is there, there is a request or there is a category in Engage for sidewalk, curb, and gutter that does catch a lot of the, the paint, the curbs, you know, sidewalk, curb, and gutter. People see curb and say, oh, the curb is not painted. So they'll put that in, which that'll get to the right people. Um, uh, but yeah, 
if you have, that's why I wanted to mention, I don't mean to open a whole nother sort of can of worms, but TAC for suggestions, right, is, is a better avenue than engage. Engage is for identifiable issues that we can repair, right? So if you're saying, hey, you know, I noticed that I rode through this intersection and it was really dangerous. And if we had this, it might have, it might be safer. That's not something that you'd want to put in engage. That's something that should go through TAC, right? Um, it's it's the proper avenue for that where it's going to get the right people looking at it. Yeah. So this is the same for new, not main. This is the same for maintenance, not new stuff. So on maintenance, you know, the along our bank front trail, somebody some time ago had these mile markers every half mile. You might be familiar. I know that guy. He yeah. has an excellent. We put them in. We, all, <laughs> we put in arrows, painted arrows on the pavement. Yeah, they're just about all faded out. Yeah, could we get them re repainted? Who is that? I would like to say yes. I can look into it for you. Please do. You have to make a request, though. Yeah, phone. Phone. Well, just it. It. <laughs> Your phone. Went to the wrong category, Frank. <laughs> but it is made because they were painted before. It was the repaint. So it's not a new. Yeah. So this is the right category. I'll look into it. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other comments from Deepa? Uh, thank you for your hard work. Thank, thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Happy day. Public comment. Are there any yes. comments? Okay. No public comments. Okay. Um, agenda item number three. Yes, this is uh, uh, East of 101 Transportation Improvements, and we have Matthew Rubel, our uh, principal engineer, here tonight to speak about this. Good afternoon, everyone. As I was already introduced, Matt Rubel, your principal engineer. I was asked tonight to come and give an overview of some of our projects we have going on. So um, this is something that engineering, we're hoping to come with you on a regular basis and regular intervals. A lot of different project managers come here, share different projects that are in design or in construction, get feedback and just kind of share what's going on. So I'm here tonight to share with you um, our East of 101 transportation improvement vision that the city's working on. And it's all kind of coming together in the guise of a um, Eastern Neighborhoods CFD. So if I flip a web browser, I would like to show you guys a website and then maybe we can have a conversation. Uh, do you want to yep. explain where the CFD is? I would love to do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so kind of two parts to this conversation. One is what's the vision for East of 101? And then secondly, what a CFD is and what that, you know, a way to potentially fund it. Uh, to, to quickly answer the you know, that's a community facility district. It's a way for businesses to, uh, or property owners to tax themselves in order to bond against it to build infrastructure. Um, and that's an item that'll be going before council next week on the 11th. And so that'll be a conversation that the uh, city council will be having. And with the whether to put out ballots, I'm not really here to get into that because that's not really my role. I, it's kind of above my head, but I am here to talk about the city's vision for the infrastructure. So if you click on this website, um, we were able to share kind of the location where we're talking about. It's kind of the East 101. It's our business district. It's, you know, and trying to really address traffic congestion, safety, some of our aging infrastructure, and really try to think about that last mile mode shift. Um, some of the things to consider is in our long-term growth for this area, the amount of population that's going to be commuting in and out of there every day is going to increase dramatically. And so we need to find a way to improve our infrastructure to account for that. And one of the key tenants of that is finding ways for people to commute that doesn't involve a personal automobile. Uh, there's still roads, we're still going to help to allow that, but we want to make it more accessible for transit, bikes, uh, people to take the train in and then get to their work safely. Um, so some of the big visions out there that we're trying to identify, one is just the roadway rehabilitation. So the city's invested significant money into our roads, uh, about $24 million recently in just West 101 paving that you've seen in the last few years. 
Unfortunately, our wet or fortunately, our West 101 is starting to look really good. Our downtown got surface code. You see the, some of the improvements. This part of our town just has a lot of needs that have not been addressed. So if the CFD were to go through, we would be setting aside 20 to $30 million to do a big catch up project over there. Um, not really transit related, but it does affect you if you're on a cyclist and there's a pothole everywhere or whatever. So it does, it does really matter. Um, one of the other key tenants is transit facilities. We want to install, or our vision is to have 1.3 miles of transit only lanes. So mm -hmm. to really make it uh, fast and efficient for buses to get in and out. Uh, 24 bus stops will be upgraded and have accessible improvements made to them. And um, so, and real key improvements around the ferry and the Caltrain station. Once again, really trying to make those strong links to make that a more desirable way to um, access East of 101. And then, uh, you know, really focusing on pedestrian, you know, whether you're just trying to walk across to a different campus or you want to be able to walk from Caltrain or uh, one of these other transit services, um, updating um, all the intersections and crosswalks. Bicycle facilities, uh, I'm not going to read off the whole thing, but it is looking to add 5.4 miles of separated uh, bikeways and trails and uh, really improve five potential connections across 101 so to really make it um, an accessible, safe area to bike. Um, this vision really, there's no reason why we shouldn't be doing this. It's flat. There's no reason why bikes aren't a very uh, comfortable mode of transit out here. The crossing of the highway is uh, not mm -hmm. flat. Yes. That's a very good point. <laughs> and that's a real challenge right now. Yes. There's not, there's not a comfortable way to cross the highway right now, with the exception of maybe the new Caltrain station, that tunnel, mm -hmm. but the other ways are not comfortable. You can do it, but I, I don't enjoy yeah, it's it. It's like the Boulevard, but it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. And really narrow and dangerous, yes. Yeah. So those are the goals, or those are kind of the city's long visions that were outlined in the general plan, the bike pit master plan. Um, here's kind of some of the land use out there. We don't really need to uh, get too much into that. Here's some of the tax rates, which once again, that's not really my purview, but we have identified for um, proposed projects. And I really invite you to go onto this website. It'll be in the meeting notes, dive in, read through it. It is some uh, pretty interesting stuff. For each one of these identified improvements, we have a little description, so, uh, some kind of rough order magnitude costs that are associated with it. Um, and here's really what I want to discuss. What's the actual vision? So we actually hired an engineering transformation firm, Fan Pierce, to help us identify. We said, hey, the city's got all these high-level concepts, high-level plans. What does that actually look like on paper? And how does that actually work? So we hired them to look through most of the corridors east of 101 and come up with a quarter-level study, 10% level plans. As you see, they're printed out in front of you, and we'll bring them up on the screen to really identify, okay, how does that look in practice? Part of this is to help us more visually represent what are these improvements, to help share with folks, get feedback, to see how they would fit. Two, uh, if the CFD were to pass, you know, okay, what are we actually building? You know, help us uh, identify that. And then three, if the CFD doesn't pass, we still have a really good roadmap for what our vision is and we'll look to uh, the developers as they come on board and pay their fees to um, build it in chunks as the money comes in or as the market allows. Um, so one of the areas that I think it's worth pointing out, and uh, keep in mind these aren't fully designed, this is just kind of high-level concepts, but you know there, there's a lot of thought that did go into these, is for our new Caltrain station, you know, how do we get bikes, peds, and transit in and out of this area? So one area you'll notice is in red, it is a bus only lanes. So one of the concepts that was to help transit that I believe currently goes up corporate drive and then comes down wraps around Paletti way. It's a slow route to get to the Caltrain station would be to actually build them a dedicated off ramp here off of East Grand, just a little separate little road spur and would make uh, for a much more fat, um, a shorter time for them to get to Caltrain, pick up people from the station to drop off and, you know, make a loop and get back out. Um, some of the other improvements are enhanced bike lanes. As you see, we have a class one separated bike facility that would bring you from the Caltrain station, avoid a lot of this uh, freeway on ramp and off ramps and get you 
heading east or north, depending on your direction. Uh, same, we have for the actual people who are going to use these campuses, additional bike lanes here. Um, I don't know, you guys can see through the map, so I'm not going to read through every little feature, but I'm really trying to show the infrastructure being designed with these other modes as our primary concern mm -hmm. and not just adding more capacity for automobiles. Um, One of the other areas that's really uh, definitely would like to bring to your attention is Oyster Point. So we would, uh, one of the biggest bottlenecks right now to buses coming to and from Oyster Point, which is the, uh, one of our more heavily traveled uh, areas, is the buses are stuck in the same traffic as everyone else. So if we could find a way to create a bus only lane that would get them across Oyster Point and get them, you know, on their own dedicated uh, shared carpool lane onto the freeway. That makes the uh, nice. bus just a lot more attractive and businesses can help promote that use. Uh, we also want to get bikes and peds across the freeway. Once again, going back to the, our crossing of the freeway is one of our major challenges. And so we have envisioned a separated uh, shared use path along the northern edge of Oyster Point that extends from east of, or sorry, west of 101, heading east this and what would- This spoke to us about? Uh, Lawrence was talking about the bike boulevards were um, over on west of 101. Okay. They were like- Juniper, Sarah, 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 and Westboro. Yeah. So would it yeah. be something similar to what he spoke to us about or? Yes, okay. so very so similar concept. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, please. Uh, if you have any questions on those things, I'm happy to share what I can. I think um, right now the questions. Sorry. I think you had a question. Oh, uh, I'm just struggling trying to, trying to picture that. Mm -hmm. That happens to be a very dangerous uh, intersection for me. You're riding my bicycle up Oyster Point and then coming up to the freeway. It's a double right onto the freeway. Yes. I had to make it the green light and I've got these freaking morons coming around. Mm -hmm. And the first one, the guy on the inside will stop for me. And then the next day coming around the backside, don't see me. And I'm, yeah, anybody, don't just get me started. <laughs> I hate that intersection. It's very dangerous. I, I, um, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, so that is something we would hope to improve with the yeah. long-term vision for Oyster Point. And so how exactly that gets done with this separate signal timing or how that would happen, I, I have to admit, I don't know if it's been fully um, explored here, but that's definitely something we'd want to consider to make that a safe, comfortable connection. Perhaps a push button for the bicycles, cars, pedestrians only, and cars no right turn on red. Would be quick, like yeah. That. There's not that many pedestrians or cyclists, but when they have them, it's Give them dangerous. Them. Agreed. Yeah, because the second car turning right, the second can't, car see right. Them. See, can't see them. They don't really care. They're just trying to hurry on to the freeway. Yeah. Um, and as you see, as we go through, we try to design intersections for um, all users that protected intersections where we can. So uh, they include bringing the bikes along in their separate uh, traveled way and really just catering the infrastructure. So you can, in theory, come all the way across and get to the end where Oyster Point uh, is that corporate drive where we get you to the end and get you to Oyster Point in a safe bike lane and, or a safe uh, transit lane. Uh, unfortunately, just not enough width to do a dedicated bus lane in both east and westbound directions here. You know, that is one of the compromises that we had to um, wrestle with. But given the traffic patterns, this is what we're proposing would give the most relief to the afternoon mm -hmm. traffic, uh, where the morning uh, eastbound, I think, can uh, the buses would be able to navigate with the regular uh, travel lane. It's the PM traffic that's the the tricky traffic that's the one that really drives it i mean morning can be yeah impactful but um talking with the employers and looking at the traffic studies that was identified as the bigger need now down on east grand where we have a little bit more space we're proposing in both directions mm -hmm. and this is the one that would be tying in directly to the caltrain station so um we definitely would look for opportunities to uh do that here and same with the separated uh bike path um I believe this one looks like we have a, a one on each side of the road. Um, and so a lot of the things that we were trying to work through is when's it appropriate to have a shared use path where we have a path just on one side of, of the roadway where bikes and 
are going in both ways? And where does it make uh, more sense to actually separate them and have them on either side of the roadway? And that was made based on driveway access, where they'll be going, are they heading north, south, um, and things of that nature. Um, so as you can see, we have them for each corridor here. It's really a, a lot of work went into this. Uh, I definitely encourage you guys to look through this at your own pace. If you have any questions, comments, you know, these aren't fully baked designs, but it is kind of the vision. Uh, we definitely would love to hear that. Uh, specific outreach and specific design would have to be done when we actually go to build one of these corridors. Uh, so it's not, you know, speak now or forever, hold your peace, but it definitely, uh, you know, we're always looking to uh, hear improvements. And I'll just share the one project, which is seems a little pie in the sky, but if it could ever be built, it would be, um, I just think, incredible, is a bike trail connection. Is that the best crossing? Anyways, that's good with the intent of tying into the Bay Trail on the Bay side and crossing 101, tying in, crossing our great set that would be built on Linden and getting over to the San Bernardino Barge Station and Centennial Trail. Um, if that can be done, East 101 has easier access on a bike to BART or to our downtown Centennial Trail, which gets access to the rest of our city um, and potentially could be a very comfortable uh, bike route and that could uh, really just open up all transit. Yeah, that's a huge regional transit line, right? The BART, I mean, everybody can come in to now the corporate center from from BART on, on a safe path, which is a huge deal, I think. And just for our even cities, um, uh, residents who just want a recreational ride on the Bay Trail. Sure, like yeah. right now, you're, you're loading your car into a bike a lot of times, right? Driving out to the Bay Trail somewhere, get, unloading your bike. And, you know, it's great. You get the exercise, get some sunshine. But how great would it be to have a comfortable... Just yes. I mean, or you're risking it on Airport Boulevard pretty much. Yeah. 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 And there's a lot of people who will do that ride. And there's a lot of people who refuse to ride where it's un feels uncomfortable, right? It feels unsafe. And so you're loading your bike in your car to go to a you know place to cycle as opposed to getting there. So... Anyway, so, so lo lots of visions for all of East 101. Um, happy to just answer any questions. I wouldn't go to a specific location. There's just a lot of sheets to kind of cut through. There's also ones printed out if you want to flip through them, if you want to see closer. Because that's actually, I know it's kind of far to see. Um, sometimes uh, it's great to be able to actually look at a piece of paper. Is that last one reflected in your overall diagram? Because I, I saw I saw some... In the, in the kind of high level diagram, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of detail given around the the crossings, especially in the Coma Creek area. I mean, I guess it's you, you were saying it's not committed that this would happen yet. Is that maybe why? It, yeah. So this website is really was set up and was communicated to try to help um, promote the idea of the CFD to for having uh, property owners tax themselves to build these. So a lot of the improvements are. Um, or the visuals are really trying to talk about that. Mm -hmm. Where here, I think it's this green line would represent that concept. Um, Coma Creek would trails. be just slightly above. It would be two lines oh, up. Pardon me. Yep. And that would be, this would be the Coma Creek connection. So that yep. would be a crossing at the um, airport boulevard or down here at Utah Avenue of a crossing. Yep. Or down here was that bridge I was contemplating. Oh, it's down the Bay Trail. trail. Oh, down to Shaw. Down to Shaw Road. Okay. And, and over to the um uh, down down more near San Bruno. San Bruno. Okay. Okay. I noticed there's a there's a you know, to up near Coma Creek, there's a proposed extension to the trail too. It looks like it travels along Coma Creek. And um I mean at that point it, it's it's getting pretty close to be able to tie into to the Centennial Trail itself, which ends somewhere along Coma Creek. Um so that's maybe another place to consider a connector. Um I, I know it's it's further north, but there's a yeah, I mean, that's getting really close to Centennial Trail up there um, from an east-west perspective. Yeah, Centennial Trail kind of runs, you know, kind of off the page here right now. But yep. yeah, Palmer yep. Creek comes yep. down here around. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. It, there, uh, yeah, there's been another project, I think, the extend, discussion extension of, of that trail along Coma Creek as well. Mm -hmm. And so maybe there's room for tie-in somehow. Yeah, it would be interesting. Yeah, and a lot of that visioning uh, we're going to be able to do with a grant that the San Mateo County TA got for reconnecting communities. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the. It was presented here, I think, some time ago, right? Yeah. We should probably have more. The, it's a little bit on height, not hiatus. It's a little bit. It got the way the state budget. Yeah. Oh, no. the, but uh, it didn't go away. It didn't go away, but it. So the total grant amount got cut in half. 
So there was originally three agencies in the state that uh, won the grant. We won it as, uh, as a combined TA, City of South San Francisco, and One Shoreline for the urban um, grant. And there was a, a corridor grant and a city grant down south that got it as well for a combined total of $150 million. They did They did not say how that money was going to be split on the third, 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 or that was going to be worked through. Uh, with the revised state budget, that $150 million got reduced to $75 million. Um, mm-hmm. And now we've sort of been indicated that each project will receive about a third. You know, they're, they're just going to say, okay, we're probably going to get about $25 million. So now we're working very closely with the TA and with Charline to say, what do we do with this $25 million? Do we do a bunch of visioning studies and try to continue advancing uh, these plans and go after larger federal dollars, the federal reconnecting communities? Or do we set aside you know, a good chunk of that and try to actually build um, improvements right now? Uh, kind of what's that balance of going after larger money versus you know taking what you got and actually building See, infrastructure? Yeah. And I think it's kind of a combination of the two. Mm-hmm. You know, I, mean, I would hate for all that money to be spent. We don't have actual you know much infrastructure to point to. Is kind of my fear, but that's looking to address El Camino Real. Um, the barriers to transit is El Camino Real, Pomo Creek, I think Caltrain and One Hundred and One are the four barriers, and so it's trying to address those crossings. So I think it'll likely be we will probably be back here with more ideas, information, projects in the next couple of years of looking at that. And we're particularly um, excited for a chance to reimagine El Camino as part of that, mm-hmm. um, especially working closely with the TA. But... I have specific questions. I have a really big picture question. I know you're in engineering, so I don't, I don't know if you can answer the big picture question, and maybe that's a separate presentation. For this intersection, I was wondering who manages the street near, is it the city that does the street near Caltrain? Well, anyway. Is the city street or is it kept as Caltrain manager? Yeah. So, feel free to correct me, it was a private road that was being ded- is being dedicated to the city. Uh-huh. And that's why. I believe that's went fully through now, but I, it mm-hmm. has not gone fully through. So it, it, it's in transition. It's not okay. So it was a privately maintained road that the city is going to absorb and start maintaining. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yesterday I was this is super anecdotal, but yesterday I was picking someone up, and I we like we got really lost because it's not super clear where you can pick someone. But that yeah, it sounds like it's not not the city. Um, then my bigger comment is this: this is great. I love like there's, there's so much space east of 101, and I think. This vision overall at a very high level is really good. But I've been I've been pretty vocal over the last couple of years about like the roadway expansions, the Utah overpass. I think there was a proposal, I don't see the line on the map anymore on North Point. Is it North Point? No, North Access Road. Sorry, North mm-hmm. Access Road. Um, and I think there's a lot of confusion from residents about like what what is this what is staff pushing for? What are the businesses pushing for? I know city council was supposed to hear on this CFD last meeting. I think they're going to present at the next meeting, which I'm, I'm probably going to at least watch from home. But like how, how can, how can residents like learn more about like what the city is thinking about? It sounds like there's a different push and pull levers that have been that are influencing what happens east of 101 and residents just feel really lost like where where do we come in and i think that's a that's a big that's a policy debate so maybe that's like maybe that's someone who's much higher maybe the city manager or city council or something like who can who can help like connect residents to east 101 because i think a lot of residents are re- feel very disconnected from east 101 what's happening yeah so i th- i think those are some really um Good observations as a resident of West of 101 most of my life. Why would you ever drive East of 101, right? Unless you're kind of going to a handful of locations. I think uh, just anecdotally, when I talk to people, I say encourage them, drive down West Point. You, you, if you haven't done it in the last five, 10 years, just do it. You know, spend 15 minutes, you'll be blown away with just what how much it's changed. Um, before any of these projects were to actually go forward, there would have to be a, a public engagement. There would be a process by which uh, we would have to sell the vision, right, of showing what the project is and receiving input. 
Um, so far, all the work to date is really piggybacking off of a lot of the planning documents that have been done recently, specifically the general plan and the bike path master plan. So really looking at those as that large um, engagement with the community. And so this is leaving, okay, where is that uh, showing us? But if it actually moves forward and gets funded, that's where a more specific project um, engagement will take place. Okay. Um, another follow-up, I guess a follow-up question, yeah. like the CFD being presented to city council at the next meeting, whatever that is, mm -hmm. um, it was very noticeable that Utah Avenue, the Utah Avenue overpass that I've been vocally opposing, mm -hmm. it's an expensive roadway expansion, um, was off the list. So is that still the city's priorities? And would the city still seek funding to try to fund something as big as the Utah overpass um, as a priority, or would it, or would it, to say, okay, as a policy, it's important that we, rather than investing on this roadway expansion, it's important that we make sure we install the bike lanes and the transit lanes first, and the pedestrian improvements first before we allow more cars to come east of 101. So I think there's. Um... One of the key parts of the CFD or why it's attractive to the property owners out there is they want improvements that can be built relatively quick and for a finite amount of money. So if you only have 150 million, I believe it's 150 to 180 million is kind of what they're targeting. What's the best way to spend that? And the consensus is we should do bike lane improvements and kind of everything I just showed you there. That's the priority because that can be delivered in you know a handful of years. You know, uh, and that should be done first. The long range uh, Utah overcrossing project is not funded. You know, it's still in uh, design right now. So that's still a uh, identified as a long-term goal for the city because it has other uh, benefits that we need, but that's not what the CFD is looking to fund. There's only $150 million and that would all be absorbed by the Utah overcrossing project. Yeah. So it sounds like the city is still pushing big infrastructure, big roadway expansion projects like Utah, but it's not the first priority because it's less cost effective because it's more expensive. Yeah, I don't know if it, um, uh, I don't know if we consider the Utah Crossing a big roadway expansion project. I think it's making just a connection over the freeway. I think we're talking about a mile of new pavement in total. And so really what we're trying to do is connect our east of 101 and our west of 101 uh, neighborhoods. When Lindenville gets reimagined as part of the wow. study, there's not enough connection points to get across. So we need to accommodate all modes of transit, you know, for, for automobiles, bikes, heads, and the different users of those. So it's really more of a connection than adding capacity. I think we've discussed before in our presentations that it's not really a capacity increasing project based on the traffic studies. What it is, is it's just providing another connection. What's the time frame for the transit and bike improvements? Uh, yeah, compared like compared to the more expensive roadway projects. So it really comes down to funding. So if the CFD does not pass and kind of going on while the city currently delivers infrastructure, most of those improvements have been uh, conditioned to a nearby development. So as that development comes online and pulls building permits they're responsible for building that infrastructure around their development to help you know, offset their impact. And then as they start paying their uh, transportation impact fees, we're able to then program uh, the remaining uh, portions to have a, like a complete link or a complete area. So it's really um, development timed. And so if development starts picking up, those will start happening a lot faster. If development stays paused as it is now, those are gonna go at a much slower pace. If the CFD passes, um, you know, I, I think about a five-year window is side of what was been talked about internally, but we don't have a, um, I don't have a specific schedule because there's a lot of influx, but it would happen a lot faster. Sorry. That's it. And I think that's just kind of going back to, I think that's one of the hopes of, of the CFD board to pass is we can then hire up staff or hire up consultants and actually start delivering this projects, you know, kind of as fast as the wheels of construction and government can work. So that's something that, you know, it's, it's really more of a timing issue than 
what the end product is. And if, um, so if the CFD is approved and then it moves forward, I just wanted to, um, you know, kind of reiterate that the development projects that may be on pause now maybe will be coming online, hopefully, mm -hmm. and they will still be paying their TIP fees. So there will be additional funding available as well. Yeah, but so those traffic kind of impact fees are in addition to yeah. This, this, it's the CFD, CFD point. Yeah, it's not like the, the CFD would not take the place of those TIP no. fees. It, it, we're, we're additive. Yeah. The, the, the developer is responsible for offsite improvements that they're triggering. They're also responsible for impact fees. And then, you know, if they were to choose to sell CFD. tax yeah. themselves to pay into a CFD. Uh, the needs are great. You know, yeah. even with all these, we probably don't have enough money to do the full vision. So it's really looking at every viable source. Um, and that would also include outside grants and, you know, other funding mechanisms we get from the state or federal government. Do you think there's much support for the CFD? I have no idea to be honest with you. I do, I helped out with the with kind of the transportation visioning and some of this. Um, I am not part of those phone calls. Um, I would imagine if they're bringing it to council, they have a sense that there is support, but once again, I'm not. Is, is it just businesses that are voting to be taxed on this? Uh, landowners. So it's the property owners, East of 101. Um, because there's not, I forget the exact number, but the, since there's no residents that live over there or under like 10 residents that live under there, it's a property uh, vote. So property owners will vote. If it was a populated center, like West of 101, it would go to the, the population of the voters. So it's a very different dynamic in that case. Um, okay. Thanks. So they may not be some city residents. Oh, the property owners? Yeah. Yeah, pr yeah, probably a lot of them are not. I would imagine they're large corporations. Or, my neighbors <laughs> 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 or, or you know, real estate trusts or real you know, people who own land out there. And that's why they have to see the benefit of it. You know, their property value would have to, you know, increase or their tenants want to, would want to keep renting their spaces there because they can get it Like I know leaseability when we talk to developers, yeah. like they really want us to see these things so they can lease their new, you know, fancy new office R&D building. So and wouldn't many of these buildings have transportation demand management plans that they need yeah. to meet? Which they will help them. That meet would really meet, help them point. meet that because yeah. they may not have enough parking for their, all their employees. One of the, they should not have enough parking yeah. for their employees. Exactly. Well, one of the tensions is the different type of land users. So office biotech probably see a lot of value in getting their workers in now. Mm -hmm. uh, more of the industrial users of it who are trying to bring in their 18-wheel semis in to you know move goods around. Maybe a bike lane isn't as attractive to them. You know, so it, there's different users of the, of the roadway network. And that's actually just from an engineering standpoint where we actually go to design a roadway um, is one of the tensions that we kind of um, or one of the bigger challenges is how do I install a brand new bike lane or these brand new protected intersections when I got a very large trucks that I have to accommodate them truck turns because it's a legacy business mm -hmm. and you know it's just continuing to operate. And so how do those work? Eventually, if those uh, industrial uses get bought out and start becoming office, then it all it's easier to design the infrastructure. But when we have different users of the same roadway, um, that's a challenge. Heck, every time I go to dump in my car, I'm a little nervous, okay? And I'm not in on bikes, so I don't know how you're going to manage that. It'll um, be fun. Yeah, no, it's a great vision. I actually, I think the city's done a lot of great work in the last few years with the general plan and kind of culminating a lot of these um, drawings. I think the vision's really good. Um, it's just a matter of can we deliver it or, you know. Yeah. All right, any other comments from the Good job. Thank you. Yeah. So it's um, please see it, you know, for yourself. It's, it's a great website. You know, we're trying to be as transparent as we can about what the, the ideas are, what the vision is. Um, if you have comments, feedback, we're always looking to hear it. Um, and thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Matt. That's great. Uh, are there any public comments? No public comments. No public comments. Okay. Agenda item four. Yes, our agenda item four is uh, BPAC's letter of support for uh, improvements at schools. So um, I guess I'll go in if, in if you have anything to add. We, um, uh, Daryl signed a letter uh, as the chair of BPAC in support of uh, 
improvements at four schools in South San Francisco. So it's Alta Loma Middle, Burry Burry Elementary, Parkway Heights Middle, and Ponderosa Elementary. Um, so this letter is going to uh, the San Mateo County Transportation Authority um, requesting grant funds for, for these improvements, mostly um, obviously pedestrian, and, well, maybe not obviously, but pedestrian and bicycle improvements around these, these schools. Do you want to add anything? I can you know, say um, I'm happy to answer any questions on this. So five of our schools recently performed Safe Routes of School audits where we work with uh, San Jose County Office of Education, the school district, the local schools, engineering staff, et cetera. And uh, they do an audit, they identify a bunch of improvements that they want. And now is our next step is to take those improvements and try to get them funded. So the San Mateo County TA right now has a call for bike bed projects. So we're looking to maximize the amount of money we can apply for. So we're gonna apply for the maximum of $5 million which would include $2 million for a combination of Burry Burry and Altaloma, because those schools are right next to each other and their offsite would all kind of work together. We applied for $2 million for Parkway Middle School, because that has a lot of uh, improvements that were identified. And we identified $1 million around Ponderosa um, Elementary School. Um, the, really, the reality is the actual infrastructure costs are probably more than the grants, but we're just looking to maximize what we can get at this time. Um, yeah, so I appreciate the, uh, on a very short notice, the uh, letter of support for these, because yeah. um, it does help uh, make our grants more competitive. And the letter's included in the packet, is that right, Kelsey? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. if you want to take a look at it, it's included in the packet, yeah. I saw some of the pictures from when they had improved Parkway, and it was beautiful with the purple palm prints and the- The quick fill turned out really fun yeah. there, yeah. No, uh, that's so will that help with the grant, or? I think so. So one of the parts is we're, we're kind of playing by their playbook. It's you do these visioning studies. We had a separate grant to help us do quick build, these kind of de demonstrations to uh, not only build excitement and kind of community engagement, but it also helps us receive feedback on, well, do you like this? Do you not like this? Is there a challenge with it? Uh, especially if we try new or uh, a different configuration of the runway. And then lastly, hopefully we get the funding to actually do the hard improvements of the actual concrete and um, uh, pavement. So. Yeah, it seemed like a lot of improvements were needed, so. Uh, another one that was uh, we did a similar pattern was from Martin Elementary yes. in Motown. We did, uh, uh, there was a safe road school audit. We did a quick build, and that was really cool. We did a whole uh, painted inter, you know, uh, intersection, and now we secured uh, $3 million in grant funding for that, and we're in the design process for improvements. So the other schools are just a little behind Martin. Yeah, the, the Martin one, uh, we were able to, um, given its location in the city, uh, it, it was very competitive with first certain grants. So we were able to get that one done first. But, uh, yeah. Is there anything else that you need from BPAC in terms of like? Grant applications or this specific one? No, nothing. No, no. We just wanted so, to. Know, I mean, Matt, unless there's anything okay. you need, we just wanted to let y'all know that, that okay. you had been in support of this <laughs> via yeah, Daryl's signature. And I, I can, signed it so fast, I didn't yeah. realize the VPAC support. Yeah. We didn't officially and, vote, but and we can you. report back. Um, obviously, if we received the grants. Yeah. Good news about it. Well, yeah. we'll right. back. Yeah. And the grant was submitted on Friday. So Great. Well, well, we we go. Nice. Awesome. Good. Awesome. Good. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess there's probably no comments from the public on number four, so we'll go to number five. That's right. So uh, this item is review and discussion of the BPAC presentation to City Council on September 25th. Um, I am presenting this item, so I will continue. Uh, so we had we had mentioned this during our last BPAC meeting that the City Council has asked um, each of the boards and commissions to provide a very brief, um, I think it's, thank you, thank you. see you later, Matt, bye, to um, provide a five minute presentation to the council about um, what what uh, what your mission is and what you focus on. Um, so uh, in, in our planning division, we're coordinating the planning commission's presentation as well as BPAC's presentation. And so um, Adina, Kelsey, and I put together some slides. Um, Daryl and Dylan will be presenting the slides. Um, and so um, if, if I may, it sounded like Daryl and Dylan had an interest in talking about um, goals of the BPAC and the, the sort of the vision of the BPAC. And so we, um, 
so we wanted to bring it bring it to discussion for the full committee so that when Daryl and Dylan spoke to the council and said this is BPAC's goals that it was representative of the of the full committee so I mean, it worked out quite well I think timing wise um as well so what I thought I might do is um briefly walk through the slides if I may walk through the whole presentation just so that you can see it's it's not it's not very long it's 11 slides um and then um can have a conversation about about it Sorry. one thing I wanted to note which you'll see um on this slide is uh, we were going to share this during the staff report but I wanted to share it now is that um we have exciting news that we have a new BPAC member so his name is Carlos Moreno and he uh he is a South City resident and works for the Peninsula Water uh Clean Energy. Clean Energy. Clean Energy. Thank you. Yes. Peninsula Clean Energy. Um he was actually one of the presenters at the Silicon Valley Bike Summit um last week. Um which I was also going to update during staff. So I'm like <laughs> giving away all my all my all my all my hot updates here. But um yeah, so it's very exciting. So he still needs to get sworn in. Um to do the oath with the city clerk's office and he actually was out of town tonight um so wasn't able to join us today but hopefully we'll be at our next meeting and so that's why you see his name um on on the slide so you have a new committee member okay so um just to walk I'll, through I'll these, go back on the when will we get a, our last member update this uh when council appoints them so are you interviewing or well, it's, just it it's not as it's city it's clerk city council. Yeah. it takes it to city council so it just did that on the 27th and the 40th the one there's quite a few on the list and just one made it past oh. all right mm -hmm. is this saved to the network like did you open it up from the network network yes i've opened it up from the okay because i just drive. i just made an edit and so it was like if i save it will it reflect the edit put that on your no. calendar no okay <laughs> it will not okay, okay. Shut it all. but it will not okay great put it on your calendar yeah, yeah. 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 put it on, put it on your calendar. calendar oh this one yeah 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 the 25th uh, and if for some reason this date we could i mean it's we've got it in the system as the state but you can let us know um yeah okay so you have your cover slide and then an introductory slide um, to say that uh, BPAC is an advisory body to the city council established in 2019, seven members, and that you meet on the first Wednesday. Um, uh, can, uh, excuse me. Pat. Yeah, yeah, of course. 2019? Yes. That's what I asked the city clerk, and they said that BPAC was officially formally established in 2019. It's been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. now, maybe there was a change. I think the probably was because when I was I was over for about 2017 or 18, and I think at some point in time they started paying us, but back then it was there was no, but maybe that was a change, but otherwise this they've had a be packed for 30, 40 years. Was it more? I was gonna, I, yeah, it must have been more informal, but I think it may have been like there's one thing that we're gonna pull up in a bit is that um, um, the municipal code establishes the be or. What gets political establishes the BPAC at some order that was incorporated. In I thought committee. at the time we were a committee, and then I thought we were changed to a commission, but I'm just noticing we're still a committee. Uh, that, that might have been a difference, a change in technicality to make us a commission versus a committee, but we still call ourselves a committee, so I don't understand. But anyway, we can look into that. Yeah, we do. want to just question that yeah. again. Yeah, you guys are definitely still a committee because there's no public hearing items ever presented. So that would make it a commission. Not sure. mm -hmm. I thought it was different than getting getting reimbursed or getting some money at that minute. Everyone commission. gets paid on the yeah. board. Yeah. Our design review board does as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or if they was sometime after after 2018 that we actually started getting paid before that we weren't oh. volunteering. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, so formally so I was passionate about the yeah. issue. That's why I wanted to be on it. Yeah, so I guess that's why she put formally, right? Mm -hmm. Where it was not formal. That would make sense if you were starting to pay not too long ago. Still not wearing long pants. <laughs> I was NPS. Then we have our committee members and staff. Uh, this is the mission um, per the per our municipal code, which is the fundamental responsibility of the BPAC shall be to advise and make recommendations to the city council on minute list policy programming, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
and then roles and responsibilities. And we can pull up after we go through the presentation, we can show you in the Unicode, but um, help create multimodal transportation options that enable safe access for people of all ages and abilities, recommend bicycle and pedestrian projects for grant opportunities, participate in the development and review of uh, plans, bike and ped plans, policies and regulations. Then review the city's existing and future bicycle and pedestrian facilities and make recommendations on improvements. Uh, review development project applications at the discretion of the council, promote bicycle and pedestrian safety and awareness through education outreach and promote the usage of bicycle and pedestrian mobility. And we thought we'd have a slide um, where you could talk about Active South City and that it was adopted in 2022 and that this is really the roadmap for bicycle and pedestrian improvements throughout the city. And then here's a network map of the bikeways and a network map of the pedestrian um, spot, spot improvement locations and focus areas. So you're wanting them to say the committee did give input? I think so. I think that the committee did give input, but I don't think you gentlemen were here at that time. Uh, I came for the very end of it. Okay. So they can represent. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, and, and now, the, I mean, it's they're they're not representing themselves. They're representing BPAC. So yeah. that would be absolutely appropriate. And I would say that this is more about the implementation of this now rather yeah. than the creation of the document. That, that this really, like Matt was talking about, the CFD improvements, those are really based on the recommendations that come from this plan. Um, so a lot of the work that we're doing now um, as the committee and as staff are based, this this is the, the foundational work that we're then springing forth from is I think our thought about it um, is it's yeah, more reflective of the implementation work that's going on now than the creation of the plan itself, I'd say. Um, and then other example efforts, and we can update this, um, uh, but I was hot off the last meeting. And so that's what we had key stakeholder for active South city and other plans providing guidance on bicycle and pedestrian projects like the bike lanes for boulevards and then receiving quarterly reports on collision data from the police department. And then our final slide is a plug to join BPAC. Yeah. The end. So this is 11 slides and you have five minutes. So uh -huh. that's about 25 seconds a slide. Uh, so we can cut things down. Um, I know y'all had an interest to in discussing goals. So we can um, see how that how that feeds in. But yes, the direction from is, is it the council, the dean, or the city clerk's office? The five minutes. City manager's office. I mean, they're not going to like pull you off of the hook. <laughs> but I think it's just an in recognition that like council meetings can be really long. So yeah. just trying to like, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we get through these pretty pretty quick. Yeah. It's not a whole lot of content. Yeah, I, I mean, if you go a little over, it's totally fine. But well, they the, ask questions. I, I mean, they may. Yeah, there may be questions, and there could be questions for uh, BPAC members or for staff. Yeah. One thing I was I was wondering if we could do for these slides is that uh, right now a lot of the content is just derived from the code itself. Yeah. I mean it's not it's not probably something that's super new to council members. Although yeah, we could definitely go through it. But um, is there anything that we can add that kind of uh, does more to play to to present information that's kind of placed in in this context of this group, these people here, and the time that is taking place? Because other than the reference to Active South City, it's all just derived from code basically. Mm -hmm. um, and so. I don't know, maybe something like um, for the BPAC members, what are, what are the current priorities people are interested in focusing on? Because, yeah. I mean, the responsibilities are all pretty broad, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we want to, like, you know, list list the top top priority for each person on the BPAC or if we all agree on some things to list. But, but something could. like that would be nice, I think. I, I would recommend if you can have a few bullet points that are like that the group comes to together versus listing individual just because mm -hmm. it is like yeah and we have a new person coming and we don't know what hit you know what I mean so just yeah. kinda, I think that would be great It'd be really a good a good idea and would be more interesting than but like Chris volunteered us like I got to do the safe routes to school and the mm -hmm. bicycle every kid deserves a bicycle I, I know you guys Chris has volunteered you guys for things too right mm -hmm. And so then we get an interest in it. He's right. It's like those are important to me that every kid gets a bike and the they bring us to school because I didn't want to school. <laughs> I don't know that I mean your daughter is small, right? 
Oh yeah, she's sixteen months. Yeah. <laughs> she's very, she's very still walking to school. <laughs> she's walking though, right? So why she's she's well, why don't you watch it? Yeah, why don't we just list? Yeah, I think it would be. But helpful. you know what I mean. You're not. Yeah. yeah. Are my priorities are yeah, your yeah. priorities? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. <laughs> I was thinking I could just take notes as you talk, so this doesn't have to be like formally polished first bat, first first go. But is there something that that comes to mind? So you had mentioned, um, but I think we all want to. We all wanna yeah, that's a like currently active project, right? Mm -hmm. That I think we're we're engaging on a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've never, for as long as I've been on BPAC, we've never sat and said, what are our priorities? We've kind of just taken it top, topic by topic. So this is good I, that we have this opportunity. I, I would say, I actually think that would be a great I mean, I, I don't future want to, agenda. Let, let, let's have that be a full agenda. I mean, let's do this conversation so we can kind of get yeah. this, but I would love to just like put that on the agenda and spend, have that be the mm -hmm. thanks agenda. Yeah. It's been particularly when we get our new member and hopefully if another new member um i think that'd be great well i mean and, we all want to help you guys do your job right? right that's why i want to like let's just talk about like what you know so yes we will megan is writing it down to do I, am, I am i am <laughs> no, we do have our own yeah things that are close to our hearts and that's, and that's why you're on the committee so that's great too so does anything else come to mind yes uh, cr crossing 101 okay you are so brave and you are also so pretty. No, I'm just <laughs> yeah, me not anymore. And, but that would, again, uh, my, my my own my own like uh, that issue is definitely um, trail connectivity. I guess Centennial and Bay Trail are, are an example. But yeah, bike and pet trail connectivity is a big one. It's Centennial Week, though, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Centennial Week. Trail just, I, I don't think way is in. in it actually is. Is it really? Yeah, that's its wow. formal name, is Centennial okay. Trail. The only reason I know that is because I worked on the Centennial Way Trail master plan, which is like quite a mouthful. We're very formal here, so yeah. we'll leave that I don't know why it's like that. <laughs> trail connectivity to the trails? Or within the uh, trails? Trails connecting to each other. Yeah. Trails, there's, connecting, there's, trails there's, connecting to yeah. one another. I can I can work this minutes yeah. a little bit to make it smoother, but yes. my biggest priority on this committee has been um, number one, stopping roadway expansions, and then figuring out how the city can shift more funding to transit and biking, like this diagram shows. Um, prioritizing. I would say focus, focus, funding. focus, and prioritizing funding for transit and pet approval. I used it answering again. Yeah. I'm putting it on the notice. There was a talk a few years ago about us putting in a, some sort of a rail system from the Caltrain station out for the industrial area, like a sky rail. Oh, the, um, what was it called? Oh my gosh, I always forget what it's called. The glideways. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, that went away. They went away. Yeah, there just wasn't. It wasn't feasible yeah. financially or physically in the in the with the with the right of way that was yeah. available. I mean, so it sounded like it was going to be very expensive. It's very expensive. <laughs> the bank was buck issue. It's like well. it's like our, it's like our ferry. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah. I was thinking yeah. about that. I watched the, the boat come in. About fourteen people get on it. And then it taken off, and I said, "That's an awful expensive friggin' boat ride." It's yeah. like a cruise on the 14, Caribbean. Fourteen people. <laughs> Where does it go? Where does it go? Well, it goes across the uh, oh, Alameda, yeah. Yeah. Jack London it's Square, fun. and then it goes back it's about two or three times a day. He doesn't go to San Francisco? I mean, no. Well, I mean, Peace Bay. But it's, it's, it's an expensive, huge... Have you been out there, right? You've seen the... Uh, I've seen it, but... The, the, the dock building is locked up all day. Um, it's just open in the morning and the evening. If you want to say anything about I mean, all the... Uh, I'm talking about on the uh, the bikes for kids. Yes, so, oh, yeah, every, yeah, every kid deserves a bike. Yeah. Is support for every kid deserves a bike? One thing I've heard a lot of what's asking about too is the active South City comes up a lot, right? But but I think we don't have a lot of data on our progress. 
or tracking yeah. like what's really going on. And so I think I don't know how to summarize that. Maybe um yeah, just track South active South City progress. You know, I think we still we still don't have a good view of where we're at and you know what things maybe were were skipped when a when an area was was redone or what things did make it. Um but I think this group does seem to have a lot of interest in in following up on it, right? Yeah, I'd like to hear what happened. You know, Chris did that demonstration project on El Camino. Is that going to go forward now, or it is not? It was we all the demonstration. Was, yeah, it was just yeah. a pilot oh, project. Yeah. yeah, but that would have been so amazing. Making El Camino safe. <laughs> yeah. I would say though that that type of improvement would be would be not knowing the super details of that since I wasn't here, but considering bicycle um, dedicated bike lanes on El Camino Real would be considered as a part of the reconnecting community grant. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. When we went to the Silicon, Daryl was there as well. When we went to the Silicon Valley Bike Coalition Summit on Thursday that was held um, at the LPR here in South City, that was a huge focus. And that's the focus of um, the Silicon Valley Bike Coalition is improvements along El Camino Real. And so they highlighted a lot of work that um, Palo Alto and Mountain View have been doing to their portions and of, of the ECR. And so um, I think there's energy. I mean, there's been talk about it for a long time, but like perhaps more energy these days. So I think the businesses that lost the parking on the street killed it. Yeah. And that was only on one side, but they killed the whole thing. That there was a lot of uh, comments. We received many, many comments about negative. it. There were a fair amount of negative comments. I bet the lots of parking for the demonstration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot. Okay, we're the same people. Yeah, every day. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Any other priorities? Oh. Are there? Oh. Go ahead. Sorry, were you going to continue the conversation about El Camino? No, no. I was okay. wondering if there were oh, priorities. Oh, uh, vision, vision, simple. Yeah. I think um, your slide on accomplishments kind of relates because um, there was a bullet point about getting police reports on visions of mm -hmm. enforcement and incidents. Mm -hmm. I think I think those go hand in hand. I've been really I've been really proud of the speed pack for being able to push that. Are there certain Priorities that y'all that you feel like rise to rise to the top, so that are like priorities of the priorities. Well, I think you can combine bullet points two and three. They're both the the theme of bullet points two and three is connections. So we can just say bicycle connections across the freeways and connecting the trails. I think you can combine the schools one because they're highly correlated. They're both okay, programming and infrastructure around school. But she asked which ones were the priority of the priorities, right? Mm -hmm. Are we voting? No, I just didn't know if like you felt very strongly about you may implementation of the business zero policy. So if, if there's not a clear it's okay. Yeah. You may want to, I don't know. I mean, it is your opportunity to kind of pitch to council a little bit too about what you want funding for or that type of thing. Okay. As the chair and speaker, I would, yeah, definitely put that one at the top. Okay. I mean, but they're all, you can also state these are all important, like they're, you know. Mm -hmm. What about that? Is that kind of? Yeah, and we're kind of like, I mean, so the policeman comes and talks to us every quarter and tells us where the accidents are and what's happening. Mm -hmm. So then when someone else comes and tells us about a plan, we can say, oh, but we heard there were a ton of accidents. So, yeah. so I don't know how you put that into words that we, we kind of try to. I think you could say focus. I mean, implementation. I, I, I think like that's the implementation of vision, vision zero. Okay. Like the, it's safety, right? Like that's yes. what it boils down to. The policeman comes and tells us where the problems are. Then we are, you know, Matt comes and talks about potential solutions. So you can help make those connections and say, like, for example, when you mentioned kind of that, um, that intersection is incredibly dangerous with the double right hand oh, turns. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of Much exactly that. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly the focus on safety that, you know, we're looking for. Okay, so we've covered that. I think so. Thank yeah, you. I think that's in the vision zero. I feel like yeah. that's in there. Is this 
But it's hard to explain all that in five minutes. I think we could. I mean, I think to Dylan's point, we could uh, yeah. do away with these two slides. I agree. Um, I think we could also do away with these slides. When we put these yeah. slide deck together, we weren't totally Maybe sure what the PPAC wanted to present. Yeah. So um, I think graphics are nice, point. though. Like, it just is, you know, yeah. it's yeah. nice to have some well, graphics. Yeah, we could, we could flat for it. Just yeah. 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 Like, yeah, you wouldn't want, you want to, to stay there too it, long. But it's, yeah. so you know. You could have these at the end. Remind people that there is a plan out there yeah, that you're working on implementing. Sure. Oh, I thought you. Were... Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I think we could pull the rules. We could. I like that. I mean, you could even just have these five slides for however many. Yeah. Although you did, I like your point, Adina, about the graphics. Not to. Yeah. Kick the graphics to the end. Um, well, can we? Well, I don't actually. Five and six. I was going to suggest put six before five. Like, here's what we've done. Here's what we're looking at doing. One thought, and, and y'all can, since you're the presenters, it's to like lead with the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So like the thought about in staff reports, you put the recommendation at the top to say like, this is BPAC, these are our priorities. Oh, so lead with like the that. priorities? Yeah, so that you you have their attention at the very beginning and you come out instead of like talking through stuff that to your point, you had said maybe they already know, but like oh, yeah. just really being like, we're BPAC, this is our priority. I think can, can be very powerful, but um, this is also... Your presentation and you can yeah. but it, it does flow more i understand saying like this is what we work on but these are our priorities oh i see what you mean i, I like saying though that these are our priorities and then you can talk about these are the types of projects we work on mm -hmm. and because they're implementing mm -hmm. these priorities yeah oh okay. I think that yeah. makes sense they, yeah and the council interviewed us so they reviewed all those roles and responsibilities right. with us yeah yeah Maybe the other people just might have a meeting more, but can we email them? Right. And, and it will be, you know, it'll, be saving it, it. it'll be on, it'll be televised, and Good it is a night before we close it. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. That's a great idea. They just yeah. noticed yeah. something. Yeah. something yeah. Asper, but so maybe we put it towards the end. Right? email that could we because to ourselves? If you're trying to, I don't need to. What is that? Maybe now. Look, maybe when we saw the I'm excited. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I want not pull your email. Turn the meeting. But if you remember the audience, um, or the council members have marked uh, no, the Gallus as a bicycle rider. Yeah, yes. Oh, yeah. That's right. He lives in the Westboro like, area. Yeah. yeah. So, what project can we find for bicycles in the Westboro area? So the, 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 the last that's one across 280. Across 280, yeah. that big one. That's it. I don't know. Because he came to the one thing on his bicycle. They, Sorry? He, he came to the demonstration. The demonstration. Yes, on the, yeah, the electric bicycle. It's a, he's an easier time going over those hills than I have because he's got an electric bike. But um, we never took a stand on that, did we? Take a vote on that? Which? On, on the Westboro connection, Westboro 280. No, we kind of just we, we went through really fast. Yeah, went through city council, boom, and it was fun to do. Yeah. Any other thoughts on the presentations? Is this, so here's, here's where we are right now. We're again, intro committee members. Mm -hmm. Mission priorities. So this would be, I would presume, where you would spend most of your time. These are the. Um, I'm saying, should we say like priority implementation? Or like anyway, sample efforts. It's kind of recent duplicate, efforts. right? Recent efforts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. And then implementation of the plan. So okay, so talk about implementation. I think so. We, you could say like w another focus of ours is really implementing the recommendations in the plan. Um, and and Dylan, I mean, this is where you can talk about it and and tracking what has been. Yeah, yeah. Flush. I, I think we just pull this up for for reference and, yeah. and maybe spend a few just a few seconds and, and yeah, tie back into the fact that we're tracking this. Here's some, here's some of the detail things, in there looks like. And one thing, you know, when I was talking across, for example, like. Grant applications or other things like that. I mean, typically they are, you know, this support for these projects at the schools. Well, those are going to be implementing the South City, mm -hmm. the South yeah. City plan, because that's one of the projects. Yeah, yeah well, they had improvements around schools. I know they check first to make sure it meets the words of the plan before they send the request. 
And then we have our last one, which is join us, be back. And then we can have these as pocket slides, just in case the council member says, what are your roles and responsibilities? You could say, we've got it here, but they're hidden. So I doubt they will. Yeah. Yeah. Be surprised if they did. Okay. Well, we can, um, what we can do is save this and then send it out to the committee so that y'all can think about it. And then um, that way y'all can also practice. And for the BPAC members who are not presenting, you're of course always welcome to attend council. If you're not able to attend, you can watch it on TV if you want to watch Daryl and Dylan present. Yeah, or if we if we miss something, we can suggest edits that. in the meantime, right? I mean, we can we oh, can course. still make a make an adjustment. Or something. Yeah, so this will be. Um, well, let's see. We'll need to get this uh, wrapped up like with them. Oh, I'm starting to get to show me the calendar. Oh, okay. Probably the next week or two. Yes. You'll send it to us in the next week, and then oh, well, we'll send it. We we'll send it to you tomorrow. tomorrow oh, but we want to like. We'll finalize it. We'll finalize it. In the yeah, next. just because it needs to get loaded up. Okay, but I will. We have to get it. System. Yeah, I think we have about two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. We have to get it into our system by around the 18th. Oh, I'm a little. I'm a week ahead. I was actually thinking we were already here. Yeah, yeah. you're absolutely right. We, yes, we have about two weeks. Yeah, we have about three weeks. weeks. Okay. Okay. Good job. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for letting us make a little bit. Oh, this great. is great. This, yeah. this, I feel like for us too, this is incredibly helpful. Mm -hmm. And I do think I would, I think having like, let's just, I think talking about priorities and like drilling yes. down into each of these would be a little bit, would be really helpful too. Like when we're talking about the connections and the, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think, I think like you said, we probably bit. need to spend most of our time here for only five minutes. Like we'd go pretty fast. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. So we can do that. That's a really good item for our future to focus on. Okay, thank you. Well, oh, sorry. You're um, I have one last suggestion. Can we split this into multiple slides? Or is that going to take up too much yeah. time for five minutes? Yeah, you could. I'll just, that's, I'll, put, I'll leave that on the table. Um, consider changing stuff around. Like you can take out some of the Active South City or combine the Active South City slides. Because I don't think sure. we're going to talk about the Active South City slides that much. Yeah. Let's put this up. Yeah, we can. And then can uh, Dylan and I make edits outside of this meeting? Or is this pretty final? I would say that, I mean, for my two cents, you can make, you know, uh, what was it, cosmetic edits. Cosmetic. But I, I think to make any changes to the priorities, we would, okay, would need to have a commission discussion or give a discussion. Right. Would you All right. Cool. I think that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I think that sounds okay. right. Have okay. Uh, I'm assuming no public comments. No items from BPEC members? Nothing. I mean, I, I think I said I'm just curious about that In and Out Burger and what it's going to do to traffic there. But yeah, me too, actually. Um, so I mean, I tried to go to the DMV and couldn't get there, couldn't get so past In and Out over there. I can so. give you an update. I mean, I can just explain where it is in the entitlements process. It's an active application. The applicant has submitted an application. It staff is reviewing it. They have submitted a transportation analysis that staff has reviewed along with all of their other work required studies. We're likely going to be getting a, um, a peer review, hiring our own consultant to do a peer review of their traffic analysis to determine, you know, if there are traffic impacts and mitigation measures. Um, it'll, you know, it, it'll be going to design review board, Planning Commission. Um, is there any? Did we already pass the public comment part? No. But I, I mean, it, it hasn't even gone to. I mean, it's at the very beginning of the process. Like, there's quite a. Because I'm well, obviously voting no. <laughs> well, it's. I mean, if you want to make a public. Yeah, that's. So how does that happen? Or should I ask you after the meeting? So not to Let's talk about it after. Okay. I mean, you're, it, it is any member of the public is welcome to submit. Yes, as a member of the it. public. I but I, I would recommend, public. you know, there there will be technical reports that will be available, which will include information about traffic impacts, as well as potential measures that could help to 
reduce or mitigate impacts. So there will be much more information available. Okay, good. But that's not available yet. Yeah. Because if you're trying to go to the DMV in Daly City at lunchtime, you'll know why I'm worried. Can we have this project as a BPEC item? I when it think gets it's ready yet. It doesn't sound like or it. when it's ready. We can. Or just, you know, any any kind of project that will attract lots of automobiles. In and out is a very auto centric establishment and it's right on El Camino where a lot of the bike improvements will are proposed. So I'm, sure. I'm extremely yeah. concerned. Um I've I want just want to say I, I went to the Silicon Valley Bike Coalition Bike Summit last Thursday, uh, courtesy of the city representing BPAC, and it was extremely exciting. I really want I really liked how the bike coalition emphasizes um, well, first of all, they only in the last few years has the bike coalition been in San Mateo County. And so like, I know the new executive director, she's really been trying to push more bike advocacy in Brent County, because if you kind of look at bike advocacy in the Bay Area, San Mateo County has pretty much been nothing. And so the fact that the bike coalition has been spending a lot of resources in, in South City is is great. Um, I, loved, I loved how, um, that there was such a strong emphasis on equity and looking at transportation impacts from automobiles at the beginning of the conference and all the sessions kind of focused on that. I was actually really surprised that almost everyone there was a professional. I'm I'm a professional, but I was there representing BPAC. So, um, but almost everyone like was representing their empl employer, which I was surprised. And I thought it was going to be more members since I also am a member of um, the bike coalition. Um, and yeah, I look I look forward to everything that is coming in the future. Um, Mayor Coleman gave an amazing speech at the beginning. He I don't know you probably gave him the statistics about all the changes that have been happening in the city in terms of bike and pedestrian programming and infrastructure. I, I would love the copy of that because I think um, it's it it reflects a change of the political climate in South City, which I. I, I was super proud. Um, and there were a lot of claps from mm -hmm. the audience from that, even if they don't live in South City. People came from all over the Bay Area to come to this. So I think if one person even raised their hand saying they flew here to get, get to the summit. Wow. wow. <laughs> Amazing. Gosh. Yeah. So anyway. Just, were there tons of bikes there? Yeah. And there was bike corrals and bike valet. Lots of people okay. you know, biked from Caltrain and East Centennial Way from BART. People came from all over. Uh, that's that's all I have. Great. Well, for our items for staff, um, we kind of made our big announcement, which was that we have a new BPAC member. Um, so as soon as he's sworn in, we'll have him have him come to the meeting. Um, and then I was going to also touch on the Silicon Valley Bike Summit. It was great. There were. I mean, how many people you think? 300 people? Yeah, okay. it was a lot busier than I thought it would be. Yeah, it was It was good. I've been in years past as well, and this just had such a good energy here. I think people, you could just hear people were so complimentary of the LPR, the facility where it was held. And then lots of people spoke about um, taking BART and then coming down on Centennial Way to the LPR. Really complimentary about that. And then our colleagues, uh, Billy and Tony, helped lead two bike tours of the city um, that were very well attended and um, just really great sessions. And um, the the keynote speaker was Naomi Dorner, who is, um, she works for Nelson Nygaard. She was previously the equity and inclusion officer for the city of Seattle. And so she really spoke about El Camino Real and um, its history as a trading route for indigenous peoples and how it's obviously changed very much over the years. And um, uh, yeah, it was great. It was just lots of focus on um, the, the great work that's happening here with bike and pet improvements. So it's really cool. Um, and then our last um, update is that um, we actually have Anthony from Silicon Valley Bike Coalition scheduled to come present to us in November and talk about the summit from their perspective. I think. That, oh, oh, it did. Um, what was that? What's an alert about? Silver alert. Oh, okay. I don't know. Okay. Um, so Anthony, I think is going to bring 
he, he said he needed a bit more time after the the summit to prepare a presentation so we can get more information about obviously what he's presenting but maybe i'll have stats or something about all the folks who attended um and then talking about stats the police department is also um slotted to come in november they weren't going to be able to process the q what would that be q3 stats mm -hmm. in time for the october meeting so they're going to be here in november um so do you mind if i have a side conversation with adina for a second we had talked about once in october but would we want to bring the BPAC priorities in october so what I just spoke with Adina about, <laughs> which you heard me very clearly, was would we want to bring, we didn't have any items for October, so we we're going to propose canceling it. But if we wanted to, we could, oh, they're not on the screen anymore, but we could um, discuss in more detail the impact priorities if we wanted that to be a dedicated meeting. Or we could, it would be after her. the city council presentation. Yeah, it would be, yes. Do we think that slide is sufficient or do we think we need a full meeting for it? I think we just had a meeting of it. Yeah. yeah okay. Good. That's fine. That works. Are you maybe what we can do. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. maybe, maybe we bring it up in the future, especially when we have our new member at some point. Yeah. Like, what yeah. we do it when we have, I mean, hopefully seven members yeah. would be great, yeah. particularly when we have new people and we can mm -hmm. kind of do it. And have and a restart. So, yeah, a little re reboot. Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay. I, Therefore, I Oh, Can I make an announcement? Yes, go ahead. Okay, my announcement is just that this is Kelsey's last BPAC meeting. Officially the last. Officially oh, the last. last. It could have been the last. It could have been, but I was like, no, no, no. We're going to give you for one more. So I just wanted to I'm give happy it. to see you again. Yeah. Yes, yes we have fun. So I know you're always waiting for us. You can come yeah. to the next meeting. No, thank you. member of the public. Yeah. So, thank you. Kelsey, thank you. So just want to thank Kelsey <laughs> for about flying her. We really appreciate you. Yeah. But we, but so. Huge thank you to Kelsey for her amazing work yeah, with this so. committee um, yeah, and just with her, all her, all the work she does. I mean, oh, yeah. it's thank been you. an incredible time working with her. We do have a new mm -hmm. um, administrative assistant too, starting tomorrow, which mm -hmm. is wonderful. And her name is Cynthia and um, she is a, um, she comes to us with much experience from a park district in San Mateo. She's a really wonderful addition. So you'll meet her at the next meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Try to be nice to her. Try to really. <laughs> I bet you all can do it. <laughs> <laughs> that was insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we didn't beat you up too much, right? Oh God, no, 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 no. <laughs> I <don't> know. <laughs> Here's the left. No. <laughs> we have great boys. Yes, that you guys are great. Not leaving because of you. So. <laughs> did you did you staff other? Committees or commission? Yeah, yeah, a lot. So um, before uh, engineering took it over again, I did traffic advisory commission, did parking place commission, do this one. We do zoning administrator and then planning commission. Zoning administrator? Oh, well. Yeah, so I do five. When I first started here, five. Now it's three. And zoning administrator only. Uh, it's like once or twice a year. But there's still there's minutes. Still, there's still, still all the work. online. You still have to notice it. I mean, it's still an agenda. Same amount of work is a mm -hmm. planning commission meeting. It's just, yeah, we don't have them as often. Yeah. No, no, no. But you get one tomorrow. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah, we have a busy week. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, thank you. We will miss you. Yes, we will. Thank you guys. Appreciate that. I mean, you do all the little things for us to make the meetings go better. Yeah. You need water. Yeah. Yes. Well, I always finish one, so yes. thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I, I motion we adjourn. Let's well, take that. Third. Thank you, Frank. Yeah, roll call. Right? Yeah. At least that's what Frank said. Okay. okay. I can do roll call to, <laughs> to adjourn. Said roll call in the uh, past oh, or really? adjourn. Yeah. No, it's just, it's just adjourn. Uh, media adjourn at the time, and then you say yeah. one motion, second motion. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, thank you, everyone. Excellent. Thank you. So we so we have the.